In the eternal conflict between the high heavens and the burning hells, Diablo 4 offers you more choice than ever before. Player choice is infused into everything, from how you look, the skills you use, the loot you equip, your path through the non-linear story, to how and when you choose to explore the shared open world. We want players to play their own way and have their own choice of how they're going to build their character. Between all of our different systems, you can really create a custom character in ways that was not available in previous Diablo titles. When you log into Diablo 4, the first thing you're going to have to do is create your character. And those familiar with Diablo are going to be very familiar with the screen with all the classes sitting around the campfire. In Diablo 4, we got five classes. The Barbarian is your fantasy of a fierce warrior or fighter. The Barbarian is the weapon master of Diablo 4, being able to pick up any weapon, jump into the fray, and do really badass stuff with it. They're very strong, they're very physical. They can take different weapons for different situations and use them to their maximum effect. The Sorcerer is really your elemental mage. You have fire, ice, lightning. You can either focus on one or you can kind of be a jack of all trades mage and use abilities from all three. They're a little more fragile than other classes, tend to be more ranged. The rogue, unlike the barbarian, they are a little bit more clever. They're very fast. They have the ability to imbue their weapons with different elemental energies, and they can modify them to do different things. The rogue has two different types of play styles. You have the ranged crossbow type gameplay, or you have the in-your-face daggers, poisons. You can lead the enemies into traps that have huge effects, more stealthy type gameplay. And the druid is really this shapeshifter. When you cast certain skills, you change your form, what you look like and what you can do. They can turn into werebears or werewolves. If I cast a werewolf skill, I turn into a werewolf and I do werewolf things. If I cast like pulverize, for example, which is a werebear skill, I turn into a werebear, I slam the ground really hard. Fits the fantasy, it's pretty cool. They can also become masters of nature magic with earth and storm magic. Last but not least, we got the Necromancer. They raise armies of the dead. They have different types of minions. You've got your skeletal warriors, your skeletal mages, and then your golem. You have blood magic or bone magic that you can also take advantage of and tackle combat that way. If you've played a previous Diablo game and you enjoyed a certain play style, you can actually bring that into Diablo 4 or just try something completely new. No matter which class you play, there's going to be multiple different avenues and fantasies that you can chase. You can customize your character in ways you've never been able to before, with near-endless character creation and transmog options. In previous Diablo games, you had to be attached to certain archetypes and look a certain way. And in Diablo 4, it's really up to you how you want your character to look. You'll be able to choose from different facial structures from people all over the world. No matter where you are, you'll be able to say, hey, I can actually make someone that looks like me or looks like someone from my part of the world, which we're really proud of. You can pick a hairstyle for your character, and every class actually has a specific hairstyle that no other class can use. You can pick your eye color. We have some really fun ones. We have eye glowing. We have a bloodshot type eye. And then you can actually pick a marking, which is a tattoo or a design that covers your entire character. And there are dozens of those. Transmog is the idea that you can take a piece of gear and change the appearance of it to look like a different piece of gear. As far as aesthetics, the sky's the limit. However you can think of making your character, you can make it that way. Everybody's going to look completely different in Diablo 4. One of our pillars for class design Diablo 4 is this idea that we want players to play the way that they want to. When you first start the game, we introduce you to the idea of the skill tree. As you level up, you get access to these different skills or passives or upgrades to make your character more powerful. Each category has a few different skills that are all similar. They're either all defensive or all offensive, all ice or all fire. You can either focus on a very specific section or you can pick and choose. The first skill point when you unlock a new skill is going to give you access to that skill. After that, you can put additional points into any skill that you have, and it's going to make it better, whether it increases the radius or adds some new effect or reduces the cooldown through some special way. But you can actually branch out in a very different direction, even if two characters actually started at the same place. The Paragon board is a late game system that once you've completely filled out your skill tree, you think you have a build, it will really let you delve into the theory crafting and the depth of Diablo 4's skill system. And these boards, they can move through them, spending their Paragon points, and they have nodes that give them very basic stats like intellect or dexterity. We also have more powerful nodes. We have rare nodes that have different effects where they can totally modify a skill to do something additional or different, 
or they can even make new connections between skills so that players can have new ways to play their character. Legendary nodes are equivalent to legendary powers where they have more powerful effects that can change the builds and ways that characters play. You can start planning this long journey of, okay, I want to hit this node, and then I want to hit this node, and I'm going to apply this board, and I'm going to start from this side, and really just get into a super complex, very specific build for your character. Legendary items are really rare and powerful items that you're going to find as you adventure through the world of Sanctuary. We have quite a few different categories of legendaries and how they do that. Some of them will actually change your skill or enhance it in some way. Frozen Orb, for example, it might say, hey, every single time you use your Frozen Orb, it applies a new effect. And then I can actually take advantage of that new effect that it has. Even if the item itself is maybe not as good as the one you have, you can still extract that power from it, take advantage of it, and use it for your build. One thing that our players can look forward to is that a lot of our classic, really rare, and most powerful items from previous titles are going to be returning as uniques in Diablo 4. Unique items are very similar to legendaries, but they're unique, which means if that ability is actually on a chess piece, it's always going to be on that chess piece because it's more powerful than a regular legendary effect. Crafting is a big part of Diablo 4. We have all kinds of different ways that you could upgrade and interact with NPCs to make your gear better. You can increase the item level or power of your gear, so you can actually get a piece of gear and just make it stronger. You can also add sockets to your gear so that you can put gems inside of it. There are a lot of different ways that players will be able to customize their experience in Diablo 4. Every single player is going to have a different experience and a different build at the end of the day. Because we have all of these different ways to make your own character, there's a lot more possibility compared to previous titles of how you want to play, how you want to build your character. We really are doubling down on this idea that you can look the way you want, you can play the way you want, you can really make your own fantasy in this game. Hell welcomes all, and so does Diablo 4. In the coming weeks, we'll be sharing even more about how to play your way. Now, our launch on June 6th is getting closer. Closer still if you got early access. And we can't wait to see you in Sanctuary. Hail Lilith, Blessed Mother.